You're listening to the Armchair Cricket Podcast. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Armchair Cricket Podcast. Thank you for joining us again and uh, providing us with your uh, useful feedback. We've had some very good feedback from our friends and uh, listeners all over the world. So we are recording this uh, during the third test between South Africa and Pakistan on the third day of the test. So first of all, uh, there are a couple of small corrections that I would like to tell you. And we'll then go ahead with that. I'm your host, Ajit. And uh, some corrections that were pointed out by my friends and our listeners all over the world. One is that uh, Flintoff, I think in the second episode while talking about England captains, we said uh, Flintoff captained uh, in the 2011 Ashes, but that was wrong. He captained during the 20, 2006 and 2007 Ashes. By 2011, it was already Strauss because I think uh, Flintoff had retired. And the second correction point was that uh, Maharaj Kumar of Vijayanagaram, who I said had captained uh, India during the 1932 tour, had captained during the 1936 tour. I, I think I also mentioned this was the first Indian tour of UK, which was wrong. I think this was already the third tour, the 1936 tour. These were the two small corrections. Uh, now, joining me today is my friend Giridhar, so whom I'll be calling Giri. So welcome, Giri. Hi, Ajit. Thanks for having me here. Um, so last time around, we spoke a lot about India-Australia series, uh, and also Pakistan-South Africa. Um, so uh, would you like to talk about Pakistan-South Africa test match that's going on right now? Because I think uh, in the final test, it's uh, advantage South Africa at the moment. Um, so let's talk about that if, you, if you're okay. Yeah, of course. So mm-hmm. after all, we claim to be cricket purists. So that's the only test series going on. Let's start there. So that's a good idea. So for me, um, yeah, look, uh, at lunch, South Africa had a lead of 309 runs, 309 mm-hmm. runs. Mm-hmm. That looks almost insurmountable given the pitch and given how Pakistan has been batting. Uh, now I see they have uh, gone on to 343 and uh, Quinton de Kock has just completed his 100. So that's well done him. And uh, this sets mm-hmm. Pakistan a score of 350 to chase in the last test. Uh, historically speaking, uh, if the number that the team has to chase in the fourth innings is the highest score of the match. Mm. It's usually it's usually very tough for the team chasing because uh, if never on that pitch has so many runs been made, it's very tough. So and given that Pakistan batted only for 50 overs in the first innings, I think it's going to be very tough for them to win this match. They have two days, right? They have two days to bat it out. <laughs> oh yeah, we're still on the third day and uh, there are two more days to go. Um, I, I would be surprised if Pakistan were to last more than two sessions, uh, looking at their uh, uh, current and you know, previous record um, in this series. Uh, and like you said, I think we were talking about it earlier, uh, that uh, although this is a three test match series, so you can have 15 days of test cricket in principle, yeah. but this is going to be more than, oh, more of, uh, you know, uh, less than 10 day cricket, you know, uh, the whole series, I think, will be finished within 10 days, all in all. If tomorrow, every chance, every chance of that happening, right? Indeed. So if the match goes into tomorrow as well, it might still only be ten days. So this is an interesting trend. Uh, let's get into it a bit more shortly. As for me, just to finish off what you said about Pakistan. Mm. Well, look, I'm just looking at the scoreboard here. Um, they, it was a bit of a disappointing batting innings from uh, Pakistan to begin with, because for me, I think the bowlers did very well after T on the first day because until T they looked a bit flat but then I think they identified the lens that needs to be bold. Yesterday on commentary, on radio commentary, somebody said something very nice. They said, you should not be bowling the sexy length on South African pitches, or at least on this pitch, you know, in Joburg, you are mm. not looking to bowl that length where the batsman is beaten all the time. You are looking to bowl the length where he has a chance to hit you, but that means he has a chance to get out. So. The just short of length, which is, uh, you know, just short of the good length is yeah. called the sexy length there. So apparently you're not supposed to hit that because that only means the batsman will be happy to get keep getting beaten. You know, this is what I think the Pakistani team did, the bowlers, and the first two sessions. Yeah. By the third session, that hit the groove. So I think um, Amir, at the end of the day, while speaking to media, he seemed to say that uh, they targeted, during the tea break, they spoke as bowlers and they targeted keeping the runs down. 
and this led to the wickets that fell afterwards i think uh, they bowled really well i think um, the best bowler on display was amir uh, even though he only took two wickets mm. fahim ashraf has uh, gotten three mm. and hasan ali also bowled really well with abbas uh, for me shadab khan also filled a useful role there i think um, they were sort of stuck and i think shadab khan got the breakthrough of amla in the first innings uh, with his leg spin and that led to the wickets getting triggered so it it was a good uh, i think it was a very good performance from the pakistani bowling to dismiss south africa on the first day for 262 mm. following which uh, pakistan i think were 17 for two overnight they had already lost uh, azhar ali overnight which was unfortunate because uh, between him and uh, asad shafiq i think they did not score a single run in the first innings that i think proved to be very costly for pakistan they they sort of i think uh, came back well in the morning first mo- second morning so uh, if you look at the score i think the second morning something something interesting happened uh, the first hour of second morning cricket was a bit interesting because um i think south africa dropped four catches which is not very south african don't you think yeah. Yeah, I think South Africa tried really hard to um, uh, help Pakistan reach a competitive score, but I think Pakistan couldn't capitalize. I'm sorry to be so uh, uh, cynical about it, but I think uh, Pakistan had their chance if they had, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. converted they're, they're... those chances into some, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, long uh, batting innings. Uh, but Pakistan lost out. And I think overall South Africa were far too good for Pakistan. Yes. So the other thing was that Imam ul Haq had done a very good job, sort of holding one end up, spending mm-hmm. about two and a half hours at the crease, and Muhammad Abbas had spent like more than 60 minutes at the crease in the second morning. This was like almost ideal. Yeah. And he was to... a night watchman, right? I mean, yes, he's yes. he's not even a proper batsman. So. Oh man, I think I think uh, Stein was beginning to really foam at the mouth because this guy would just simply block everything. Yeah. And I yeah. think at some point in time, Stein, while running inside, don't uh, f in laugh. This guy yeah. blocks the ball. It looks at Stein and smiles, and Stein lost it. He said, "Don't even laugh," or something. So it was, it was, it was nice to see, you know. But yeah. unfortunately, they couldn't capitalize. So Mahmud Abbas had to get out, right? That had to happen. The moment Olivier was introduced into the attack, the whole complexion of the morning changed. In a mm. matter of, in that, in in one over, he dismissed both Abbas and Asad Shafiq, mm. and that changed the complexion of the whole morning. And uh, then uh, Imam Ul Haq also got dismissed by Philander. Uh, this is interesting. After which, I think uh, Babar Azam and Safar Azam took control. I was really impressed by the way. First of all, Babar Azam came out batting, even with Imam Ul Haq, and then he sort of held one end up while Safar Azam counter attacked on either side of lunch. This was good. The only problem is neither of them could go on and make a triple figure. So you know, this was very important. One of them converted it, converted it to a hundred. or at least one of them held up one end of the innings sarfaz did not look like he would he would do that yeah but i think if you look at how they uh, how they batted both of them especially sarfaz yeah. they were taking a lot of chances they were chasing uh, deliveries that were just outside off stump cutting or uh, trying to drive them off the back foot um so it was it's not like they were scoring uh, high percentage shots they were always on a knife edge i would say and it was just a matter yeah. of time before they nicked one of uh, the quicker bowlers and then safraz of course fell and then that triggered the dominoes to follow over i mean yeah. you're right unfortunately yeah, yeah. you are right that uh, safraz and babar were dismissed within two hours one of them if they had if they had stood uh, and sort of held the lower ha- lower half of the innings together because shadab khan and fahim ashraf can bat between them there would be another 30 40 runs added that meant pakistan would go to go on to 235 or 250 you know that would make yeah. a lot of difference i mean, uh, I, mean I, i would like to place the blame squarely on babar azam i know sarfraz was uh, having a chancy innings so he was trying to hit the ball out uh, he was he trying to hit out as much as he could but i think babar should have stayed because he uh, as soon as sarfraz got out the very next over olivier bon- uh, bowls him a bouncer and then he tries to hook it to fine leg he was no way near uh, he got a, i think he got a top edge and then uh, rabada caught it so and then uh, the next man coming in was fahim ashraf the first ball he gets a bouncer and he tries to hook it yeah yeah no no olivier is i think uh, this this is not the first batsman to be caught unawares by this steep bounce and is fast it looks like the olivier's ball you know picks up more pace off the pitch which is yeah counter intuitive so to say but that's what that's what he's been doing the whole series yeah. and unfortunately that i think caught fahim ashraf off guard but just yeah. uh, if i can go back a little bit uh, when i was seeing the game i saw the game for a little bit of time i think sarfraz ahmed looked really comfortable yeah, what i meant is yes he was playing a sort of a runner ball 
innings mm-hmm. that was mm-hmm. there but he looked comfortable in as much that he was able to hit the balls on the up and most of his shots sort of he was almost ready to wait for the ball to come on the up and just punch it i think he was looking good the moment he tried to do something different as you say cut it or wait on the back foot hang on the back foot and not play the ball on the up he was dismissed mm. he was caught behind right yeah. that's one thing second one with babar azam there was an anecdote actually what happened is he got hit on the head by duan olivier earlier mm. Mm. and he sort of was a little bit shaken up i think and no no not in the head but in the ribs sorry he got yeah. knocked in the ribs by a length ball from olivier which sort yeah. of snuck up up into his ribs and he had to take a break right yeah. and the next ball he sort of hooked for a four and that was sort of i think uh, duan olivier was sort of giving him that mm-hmm. it was almost like one it looks good as a batsman if you can come back hard after a blow but the other thing it almost looked like a setup and that sort of was carried over and then eventually he dismissed him you know yeah. uh, i think he duan olivier might be one of those you know deceptive bowlers who, like malcolm marshall right who have two bouncers Ooh, one you are drawing such comparison no no at at go ahead go ahead oh, i won't stop you i know i know it's a bit of a hyperbole i agree that uh, you have a point the only thing is malcolm marshall had this so that's the only thing i don't know if mm-hmm. this guy's effectiveness will be what malcolm marshall was at the end of his career we'll see that's this okay. guy mm-hmm. he has two bouncers one is a slightly slower bouncer the other is the vicious one so malcolm yeah. marshall used to do it when he used to bowl one which used to be slightly slower and which he used to be able to hook this was in the days where people didn't wear much helmets or whatever right so uh, then you thought oh i've gotten on top of it the next ball was about 10 kph faster and used to do what duan olivier's ball does it used to pick up pace off the pitch and then it used to either hit you or you would just glove it back uh, you glove it or go up in the air or hook it to find like a some such so this could be one of those old school tricks you know this is actually a very old school trick it's a two card trick so to say and a two bouncer trick and uh, i think uh, this worked here and of course the rest of the team for uh, rest of pakistani team folded up i think yeah. amir stood for a while but there was nobody to play with him you can't hasan ali has some credentials with the bat nah but he's more of a long handle player you know he just that's what you need to do yeah. no it's fine so look amir yeah but you can't look for uh, longevity uh, at the crease uh, for with somebody like hasan ali i don't think that's possible what i anyway. meant is sometimes you know in such an innings when um, number 10 and number jack sort of hold it up score 30 mm-hmm. runs 30 mm-hmm. or even 25 just swing the ball let it take edge go to third man and then it should fine like i don't care swing swing the bat yeah. unfortunately I, i don't think that worked and the uh, 185 in under 50 hours was a bit underwhelming i think duan olivier again was a shock uh, because you see he's considered more runs than normal in the 84 and over but yeah. that shock uh, the lance effect the shock lance effect really worked i think because he was able to get run through the pakistani order then yeah in return i think uh, pakistan bowled really well the first one hour or one and a half hours of their bowling were terrific i think south africa were 43 for 4 so mm. they they never let up any pressure so it was on the either side of a session i think uh, might be t yeah. and they never let up any uh, pressure dean elga was dismissed and marker markram got dismissed and i thought amir bowled the best he looked really good in that spell mm. mm. unfortunately um there was amla you know this is why i have so much of it's the bedrock of south in south african uh... Uh, oh, cricketing uh, you know the batsmanship i think he's he's been their uh, rock solid defense of course and yeah. no wonder they back him so much you know no wonder uh, 50 plus he keeps saying this is the rock of our innings this is the rock of our batting he needs to be there so look he's proved himself again so even in the last test match even in but does he need to prove himself you know no his, no it, his record it, speaks for themselves so prove is one thing maybe prove is a very prove to point. himself probably yeah so I, i told so. you he needs to get his second third fifth win whatever i said in the previous episode that mm. this guy needs to go on. on because look he proved his worth even in the previous match even in this one two very important 70s i think uh, this match he just stood he ensured he's calm his presence at the crease just gives this confidence to others mm-hmm. theon de brown didn't score zubair hamza who was sort of counter attacking in the first innings failed that meant uh, we could do much about that i was a low ball and then uh, i see and i didn't see that very, no i saw it live actually okay. it was horrible it was one of those horrible deliveries yeah, okay <laughs> just <laughs> don't bother no. unfortunate but look then then came bavuma who my claim never scores an easy run so this 23 he made was very crucial because he knew who's going to come next all he had to do is take some time out of the game so yeah. they between them i think they batted out uh, about 15 hours right the mm-hmm. very rampant nature of pakistani bowling attack was sort of held back and then comes quinton de kock again he gets the same confidence from amla and he says you know what i'm going to go for it that's what he's done 
I think he was some 23 not out of runner ball yesterday and he's now 112 of 129 not out and he's still doing mm-hmm. the same thing. He now mm-hmm. has Rabada on the other side who's blocking, who's taking a patient 12 of uh, 40, 50 balls and this guy is whacking. So this is very good test cricket effectively. So now Pakistan uh, has a definitely a chase of more than 250 on their hands. The lead is two, 353 yeah. uh, for uh, so South Africa and this effectively means they're out of the game for me. Uh, it's a, it's now a matter of uh, how many they'll make in the fourth innings rather than will they be able to score this much, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I would very much, I would be the first one to be very happy if Pakistan surprised me and get me wrong. But I don't see that happening, unfortunately. Let's see. Mm, yeah, it's it's uh, it's an uphill task. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's... Uh, it's uh, there is even a remote possibility. Let, they, they can hope for weather. I think the weather looks good. Mm-hmm. Um, the weather is good. Um, there are other couple of things I wanted to mention actually. Uh, one of them was Stain's injury. Yeah. He left the field for a bit. Uh, he seemed to have some pain on the same shoulder that he uh, had operated on, had had yeah. an operation on. Yeah. And I think uh, who, who was the guy at the conference press conference? I think Olivier. it was uh, Olivier. He said uh, there's nothing to be worried about. Uh, that's what I would say. I mean, so I, I, so the effective of effectiveness of Stain um, coming up, uh, you know, in the Pakistan second innings, able to bowl. How much can he bowl? Will he be as effective? So and good... that would also mean that the other bowlers will have to uh, bowl a bit more. You know, take the load of um, Stain. If he's not able to bowl, then they have they're just three frontline bowlers then. Um, yeah. So and what. W- where will uh, Stain go after this if he has another injury like that? And uh, I really hope not. His career. I really, really hope not because I was hoping he'll get another 10 tests at least. We'll see. So for mm. now, I have nothing to say. Uh, let's see how he shapes up in the fourth innings. Right? Yeah. I have a feeling it might something. It might be something not major, but we'll see. Because um, even if he's not able to be as incisive as he usually is, I think he took two wickets very early in the Pakistan first innings. So mm-hmm. if he's not able to, it's fine. Uh, that he's able to play a little bit a part, bit part role. Philander has been more or less inconspicuous. He usually mm-hmm. takes three or four wickets, right? So I think he'll step up. And you always have Rabada. So I think in an interview, I heard uh, Gibson say, what is Gibson, the, the coach? The coach, say, yeah. Ha, Stein has the intensity. Duan Olivier, the surprise. Rabada is an all-round bowler. And Vernon Philander is the like the choker, the Lennon length guy. So uh, the intensity may be missing, but he might still be able to contribute on the field and he might be able to, you know, help these guys go through the processes in their heads. That still helps if you're at mid-off, a guy like Stein, right? So yeah. I think it might still be too much for Pakistan, but it may have a bearing. We'll have to see. I'm very curious on how it goes. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah I think... It's also the last test of the series, so they will have yeah. some time off after this. I think he can be rested if there's any one days coming up. I think he can yeah, be rested. I don't think he will play uh, the one days anyway. Exactly. Um, there was another thing I wanted to mention. The way Amla got out this morning, I was actually uh, watching it live on television. Okay. Um, there, it was a very probing over by Hassan Ali. So okay. he bowled some very nice deliveries on good length, just outside the off stump. Yeah. Uh, maybe sixth or seventh stump line. Um, Amla was able to hit uh, Hassan Ali through the covers. I think that was a wonderful shot on the up. Okay. And it was the same. Uh, it was almost the same length, you know, the the, the same length which uh, Olivier was able to hit Baba Razam ah, with. It was the sa- on the same same place, in fact, on the pitch. I see. And it was so vicious. It bounced off the same length. I think it was more of good length than short of good length. Yeah. And it hit him on the glove. I, I was see. caught behind Amla. Um, so I think he basically hit a crack on the pitch. So Amla was priced out. He was not dismissed. Yes. That's good to know. That's good to know. He didn't so give it, was, it, it was, Yeah, but uh, I think he, there was not much he could do. I think it was just a delivery. It was unplayable. Yeah. Um, and uh, preceding this event, actually this morning, there was a pitch report done by Makaya Antini, the former uh, fast, Indian, fast bowler of South Africa. Of course. And then he had pointed out at the exact spot. And then he had dared, a kind of dared the bowlers to hit yeah. that spot. I see. If you, if you can hit this, batsmen uh, have no chance. The batsmen don't know what's going to happen after that. And Clearly, then, somebody uh, was listening then. That's good. Yeah, that's very good. I don't know if it was a coincidence or I, uh, maybe you was just trying to hit the same length and then one of them just took off. No, I uh, think the bowlers are doing good. The Pakistani bowlers are actually, even though the scoreboard does not show that, I think they have been trying their heart out. And yeah, been- exactly. So it's going to be interesting for Pakistan, uh, and knowing that Olivier has already hit that length uh, yeah. in the first innings, if he does that again, I think the Pakistani batsmen—I don't know what kind of mindset they'll be in uh, when they come out to bat. 
Uh, I have a feeling uh, Azhar Ali is due for a few runs. Asad Shafiq is usually good in the second innings. You know, let's mm. let's 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 wait and watch. They may be in for a surprise. South Africa may be made to toil rather yeah. than you know just uh, be dismissed in two sessions or whatever. I'm really hoping they are made to toil into the fifth day and then they earn their victory. You know, yeah, I think possible. they need to bat at least three sessions to to prove that they are you know worthy of playing at the highest level. Ah, no, no. that's a bit harsh, but okay. Look, so no, South the, Asian teams struggle. South Asian teams always struggle. No, but in... the intent. I think they. I if you talk about intent, they they have to show intent. Even if they go down, they have to go down fighting. Exactly. This I can't take away. This you are yeah. absolutely right. Let them fight. Let them show. Let the South African team really take the match rather than be given the match. This I agree. Yeah, and then uh, if you look at uh, the comments uh, by their coach, uh, Mickey Hi. Arthur, oh, who yeah. has South, South South African roots, by the way, uh, yeah. about the pitches being uh, too much bowler friendly. Uh, what do you say about that? How, what, have, what have you got to say? He, look, there is there is a, there is some. Uh, I think he said those pitches were not uh, worthy of Test match cricket, which was a bit harsh. Mm. Because uh, look, your team did not do anything. Your team, Pakistan, did not do much because there was a 400. Uh, on the second day, on the second test, and uh, Fafi Plessy made a hundred. That's probably a two hundred on most pitches. It's a tough pitch. This is something I can't take away, right? So if the two test matches were over in a matter of seven days, it's it's fine. The only thing is um, we have to be careful that uh, we don't assess the pitch too harshly. The batting has mm. gone on okay, right? Mm. Mm. Uh, Pakistan failed in the first innings of both the tests. What about yeah. that? Let's not yeah, let's not leave that out, right? Even they failed in the third test first innings. Okay, point number one. Point number two: If you have a fast bowling attack, why should your pitches not favor the home team? Yeah, if South mm-hmm. Africa is a good, but uh, oh, contrary, it can always f- f- fire back at you, right? When did this happen? When Swan and uh, Paneer bowled uh, India out, right, on a very bad Mumbai pitch or some such or a Nagpur pitch, right? This can happen. Yeah, yeah. And Pakistan has a good bowling attack, has a good fast bowling attack. Let's not completely ignore that, right? Mm-hmm. They did not have a bus at the beginning, but. Uh, they made some selection errors. I, th- I thought Fahim Ashraf should have played right from the beginning, even if it meant benching Yasser Shah, because he was on a high. They were a bit afraid to let him out of the team or uh, leave him out of the team. But that's probably not the correct decision there. Mm. You have to you have to also look back at it from a bit of 2020 vision. You know, hindsight is always easy. I don't expect Arthur to own up to those mistakes in a press conference, but at least uh, the. Uh, those that are responsible for these sort of things in Pakistan cricket will probably ask him those same questions. There were yeah. selection errors there. Yeah. The pitches are bowler friendly. I don't. I'm not. Perf- I'm not exactly against that. You know, mm. what yeah. I'm seeing is uh, more and more matches are getting over in four days. You know, I think even the India series, the four test matches were hardly yeah. lasted 12, 13 days. So, it's 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 not a it's not a bad thing that if it means that we are sort of going towards a Format where it will be a four-day format with day-night matches or some such. Mm-hmm. It might not be a bad idea. If this is the trend that we see, maybe until until the end of the first, uh, you know, the end of the first Test Championships that are coming up, maybe ICC can sort of take a real call, make it a day-night series more, so that more people are involved in as audience as well, and uh, the matches are tight and short because when we play day-night matches, there's usually more swing in the night. With the yeah, ball. that's a different uh, ball game yeah. altogether, right? I mean, right now people, uh, the teams who win the toss always want to bat first. If yeah. it's uh, it's a, if it's a, if it's in the uh, southern hemisphere countries, especially, yeah. uh, and then um, they they see how it plays out afterwards. But then if you're playing day night, then the second half of the day is always. Kind of in fa- favoring the bowler, right? Because so of, why not? Uh, yeah, yeah good, that's very you know. nice. It's a completely different dynamics here. It will challenge, uh, you know, traditional uh, mindset and traditional uh, okay. thought process. That Go goes on behind all this. Yeah, Go exactly. On days from the 90s where you have five day boring class, 500 plus 900 or whatever, right? Leave that out. Yeah. I'm saying maybe we are moving moving towards a four day game, even for the at the highest level. It's fine. Mm. Maybe even a five day game with a one day break in between. That's something you can think, but. Uh, you can still keep it a four-day game, maybe 2021, 2022 onwards. It's still possible, right? That the format changes, the format evolves to the next mm. uh, way, next condition. Because I think South Africa officially played a four-day test against Zimbabwe, and they finished in two. Yes, yes, that, that was another story. Right? Yeah, um, I would recommend Zimbabwe and Afghanistan and Ireland play a lot among each other. I think Bangladesh has crossed that Rubicon, but at least these three can play a lot among each other and. Maybe there's still there's still chances of a two tier um, test cricket league. Uh, we will see how it shapes up. I'm 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 curious because in the upcoming 
two years, I think because of the test championships, a lot of these things will come into focus at the end of the first test, test championship cycle. So mm-hmm. something to think of. Yeah, that's a very good idea as well. So another thing, uh, I think Sarfraz came out and uh, sort of uh, blamed his bowlers at the end of the second test. I think that was a bit of a needle. I think that was sort of a, you know, an idea they they sort of came up with in the back room to yeah. come come out and bow, you know sort of blame the bowlers a little bit. After which, uh, them, you know, get them yeah, it worked. It worked by the looks of it because what happened is Amir when he was asked at the end of the first day in the press conference about Safra's comments, he sort of just abruptly left the conference. He said, "That's it, enough. I'm walking away." Right. So I think they were they are pissed off. So <laughs> that's a good thing. Uh, this has been done by captains from time to time. Uh, I think uh, Vaughan was. Vaughan was famously riled up many times intentionally by his skippers and he took it out on the opposition. So you that, mentioned Vaughan. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, okay. he, was, uh, he was once called fat by his then captain. Uh, I believe it was Steve Was it? Was Steve yes. Okay. Uh-huh. And he came out and uh, unfortunately South Africa or England were the opposition and uh, they had to bear the brunt of it. So it, it happens. Yeah. So, yeah. So that that's that. Uh, I think we can uh, we can wrap up uh, this uh, point. I guess. Uh, um, anything more to add from your side, Giri? Um, let's let's hope to see some uh, fight from Pakistan. Okay. Uh, the way they bat. I'm just taking a look at the score right now. Um, wow, they are 369 runs ahead, South Africa at this moment. Yeah. Queenie is still playing. Quinton de Kock is still playing. Wow, uh, I think Pakistan will have 450 uh, oh, thereabouts. Wow. I think oh, 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 oh. because that I think. Then yeah, even some people, I guess. Yeah, but in the end, like I said, I would like to see some fight uh, from the Pakistani batsmen. At least the top four or five, you know, top top order batsmen need to show some. Uh, um, some I think once. Uh, attitude, uh, you know? When was this? Not very long ago, I think. Asad Shafiq against Australia, I think, led a very spirited sort of a fight back, and he scored a very enterprising fourth innings hundred, which did not lead to a victory. But let's see how it goes. Let's see how yeah. it starts. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, it's not evenly poised. I'm afraid yeah, it's yeah. completely in South Africa's favor. But let's see. But let Pakistan uh, uh, pull the rabbit out of their hat and then see. Uh, we will we'll all be surprised at the end of it all. Indeed. Indeed. Right. What do you think about uh, India Australia, the one day match we had yesterday? Well, it, that was a good match. Uh, it was a good one day match, and I'm very happy. Australia started 2019 one day in a nice way. You know, I think they had a terrible, terrible one-day record in 2018. I think they had the lowest win-loss percentage of all teams. They were below Hong Kong, wow. Netherlands, and That's amazing. Afghanistan. They, had and they, they also had that world record against England, or they lost yeah, a match. Yeah. You know, 400 odd runs. 460 or some some wow, ridiculous. Wow, unbelievable! Yeah. yeah. No, but, uh, their one-day, let's say, team was suffering even with uh, Smith and uh, Warner in it, and this is just. I think they have now a chance to come out of it. So, first yeah. of all, just uh, to look at the match uh, in a little bit of detail, I think uh, they batted first and they scored 288, right? That was a good, that was a good challenging target on that pitch, I would say. And um, they had some useful contributions. So, even though um, I think uh, Finch was dismissed in the similar manner, I think he was having issues against the ball coming in. And I think Bhuvi Kumar had a successful uh, LBW appeal or an unsuccessful LBW appeal, which was overturned. And then he was dismissed. He was bowled the same way. And what they had, what they did right here is what I see is they have built their order around some bankers. Usman Khwaja is brought into the side. Sean Marsh is at number four. These people sort of absorbed a lot of pressure. Hmm. At the end of their innings, there was interestingly 139 dots, 139 dot balls, right? So yeah. they took a lot of dots. They scored at about 70 strike rate of 70 and they built up an innings in such a way that they have these three very strong finishers at the end. Uh, I think Peter Hanscom is sort of more in the mold of Khwaja and uh, Marsh, but he had the freedom to play when he came out, right? And yeah. uh, with Stoinis and Maxwell, Maxwell, Maxwell yeah. seven, like, that's, that's a fantastic lower middle order. You have nothing to worry. Even yeah. if you are 150 or 160 at the end of 30 overs, you could easily double it, if not more yeah. than double it, right, with these three people. So that's what nearly happened. They were always scoring at four and a half up until 32nd over or 35th over. And then these guys came and they changed the complexion of the game. It yeah. was a more a classical one-day innings, you know, one-day old-school one-day innings. They did yeah. that. And mm-hmm. their bowlers came out beautifully, bowling beautifully. I think Jay Richardson is a bit quicker than most people expect him, right? Berendorf is left-arm fast. So he made his debut, Berendorf, for Australia. And he was bowling very steadily. He, first of all, dismissed uh, Shikhar Dhawan very early. And uh, I think Shikhar Dhawan was out in the first over. That was very good. But I really... 
saw the impact bowler in jay richardson come out that much the india were 3 for 4 uh, right many teams mm. find it difficult to recover from that point in a one day international and india also found it very difficult rohit sharma i think played a real gem right he 130 of 133 of 129 or whatever he finished it was a real real amazing effort it was unfortunate that he finished on the losing side for me he should yeah. have won mm. yeah he should have won the match and dhoni i think uh, got a bit bogged down earlier initially he was very slow yeah um and i think he was struggling for a bit of fitness unfortunately because uh, yeah i think he's been away from the game for a couple of months or even more he hasn't had proper match practice i would say yeah yeah and getting straight back into the groove it's not going to happen it's going to be a very difficult he was really struggling you know even uh, uh, i saw him he was very scratchy he was hitting the ball straight to the fielders he couldn't even sk- sneak a single and it- it's probably age is catching up on him, I think. Age is catching up. And I, I agree with your first point, more importantly, that I think there is something called cricket fit, right? Yeah. He could be really fit. There's no doubt about Dhoni's fitness. He's still very fast and his reflexes are as good as they've ever been. Mm. But in this case, I think there's something called cricket fit. I think I don't think Dhoni was cricket fit as much as was expected from him. Mm. And I think he got caught out. He was expected yeah. to do his best in the very first match. And mm. I think he took a little bit of time. But they were still okay. They were still okayly poised. When Dhoni yeah. got out, I thought he was struggling. And I thought it was the right thing to happen at that point in time. Because with yeah. Dinesh Karthik and Jadeja coming in, and Rohit looking like he was going to stay till the end. Unfortunately, I think India lost a little bit of momentum between over number 31, 32 to about 37, 38. Right? In those, yeah. I think I saw that there was no boundary scored in those 40 balls or some such. That was very... Well, actually, there were no boundary scored even in the first power play. There was no four as such. Oh. Okay. Yeah. There, yeah. there were three sixes, I think, hit yeah. by uh, two by Rohit Sharma and one by Dhoni. I'm, I'm okay. not sure. Of Lion, I, I guess. Yeah. Of, yeah, uh, of Lion, no, but uh, Rohit Sharma also hit a six of Berendorf, I think. Berendorf, or was that Stoinis? Ah. I don't remember. Oh, God. This was. guy is good. Come on. After yeah. backward, yeah. Boom. And he, uh, Rohit Sharma hit a six, which was, I think, they measured it at 108 meters or something like that. Holy that cow. was the biggest <laughs> six. It was right above the uh, pavilion, I think. That's and, that's Pollard, uh, Pollard level, isn't it? No, that's this Pollard. was just. He smoked him. I don't know who who the ball was. It was maybe uh, Maxwell. Oh, well done him. No, but this guy is a pure timer of the ball, man. He looks so effortless hitting those shots, right? He was, he was very fluent. Roy Chema was very fluent. He, he never looked out of place. He was there. You know, he was accumulating runs like he always does when he won, when he scores a big innings, when he scores a big century like the one he had this one. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, he suddenly started accelerating after he scored 50. I think he was he was he scored his 50 maybe in 60, 65 deliveries. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a template, I think, for Rohit Sharma. Yeah, Longer but if you look at Dhoni's, if you look at Dhoni's innings, I think Dhoni scored. Uh, I think Dhoni scored 51 in 96 deliveries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was very yeah, slow. Yeah, he was very slow. That's six yeah. of 40 or some such. So that was a bit too much. That was a bit too much from a player of his experience. Yeah, not to set cat amongst the pigeons, but what would have happened if uh, Rishabh Pant was playing in his place? He would have been 188 all out. I Is that so? Yes. Okay. And, mm. I mean, look, uh, Rishabh Pant is good. The only thing is, uh, I don't expect him to do what Dhoni was able to do every match. He might do it once or twice. Mm. If if Rishabh Pant played 96 balls, he would have had 100 runs, right? Then India would have mm. won the match. At him. Mm. Mm. But right. in that situation, I don't know if he has the cap- capacity to already, I don't know if he already has capacity to just absorb, understand this is a test match innings for me now, for the next 10 hours. If he... Yeah, so yeah. they were right. The way they played were right. Just that they could have had 20, 30 runs more probably at that stage mm. between them. But if, I'll tell you, if Rishabh Pant is able to display this sort of maturity in any format of the game that he gets to represent India, that might very well mean he's ready to replace Tony. Because, right? So, yeah. yeah. I think after World Cup, I think it will be more or less uh, Dhoni. The choice might be even taken out of Dhoni's hands if Tony doesn't. Yeah, play. but, uh, you know, I have I have full praise of uh, for Dhoni, you know. He's he's the the original match winner. He won World Cups, two World Cups for India, 2020 and uh, yes. 50 over World Cup. Having said that, um, why not give Rishabh Pant a chance to play, you know, with Dhoni also in the squad? You know, not necessarily playing in the same uh, eleven, but why not give him a chance? Would you replace then Karthik or Rayudu or whom would you play him in place of currently? I would I would replace Dhoni with uh, Rishabh Pant to be honest. Yeah, I mean, give him a yeah. give him give him a run of for his money, you know. Just let that guy, kid play. Let's see how he plays. Even if India loses, fine. He, he he needs to play in these conditions to understand his role. Agreed. Agreed. No, but I uh, think Tony's me... Tony's effectiveness. I know he he is he studied the innings. Uh, he ate up some deliveries. Fine, but 
he was set you know he was set he could have taken the bowlers on but he was really scratchy the in the over he got out just before that i saw him he was struggling so much i think he was injured right he had to pop some pills i think there was some fatigue or some back ache or some such mm-hmm. but anyway i'm not making excuses for dhoni all i can say is yes if you can also have rishabh pant in the squad that will really help just even psychologically sort of put a bit of pressure on dhoni yeah. saying you know he's this guy's right there yeah, that's point number one point number two i think karthik was a bit of a disappointment i mean if i go mm-hmm. further all of the lower middle order was a bit of a disappointment so because for me uh, well raid was dismissed right that happens uh, that's fine but uh, the way it was set up i expected karthik to score run a ball 30 35 because that's all was required if he could mm-hmm. take it to the 45th over with sharma sharma was tiring he won't run right yeah then the match was if you had 50 or 55 in the last five hours the match was perfectly set up that's all you had to do unfortunately even he ended up he usually makes up karthik even though he takes about 10 balls more in the beginning mm. usually he is usually 30 of 30 by the time yeah he got yeah. out i think he rushed the right one on i think yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. he rushed the ball the ball bounced anyway that's one thing the other thing jadeja also couldn't sort of accelerate it was probably too much to ask but there was a chance if jadeja accelerated it could still be the same thing but he couldn't and rohit sharma began to tire he couldn't run the quick twos or the threes mm. it, look it's a la- it's a very big ground at right, scg so they yeah. were, they were in a bit of trouble there and you know you yeah. know but credit where due i think the bowlers really bowled well berendorf and R- jai richardson they were really good sidal was uh, also good sidal was also good in the first few spells he was very yeah. good Yeah. So I think uh, the fast bowlers, the first two uh, bowlers, uh, the opening bowlers, uh, I think they um, they they made it very difficult for India to get away to yeah. start with, and then they they could never come back. India was, of course, uh, Rohit Sharma was there, but I think it was uh, it was almost gone by the time uh, he. Yeah, got yeah, they were too far back in the game. Now by the time he got out, the match was definitely over. Well, Bhuneshwar Kumar tried a bit, but yeah. I mean, it's no. And and one more thing I would like to mention here is about Aaron Finch's captaincy. He had a lot of close-in fielders. He was not allowing Dhoni to take those easy singles or sneaky singles. Yes, yes, so he's he, a good captain. Had, yeah, yes. so he was very good captaincy on his side. I think he did well there. Uh, he didn't just spread up, spread the field and then le- let the batsman, you know, take singles or take strikes. So he was really he was able to aggressive. See, hmm. He was able to see in the body language of Dhoni that this guy is not looking comfortable. Yeah, you know? let's not give him any easy runs, right? Exactly. If he yeah. hits, he hits. We know he hits very long. That's fine, right? If that means he hits every fifth ball or sixth ball and he blocks four, you're still winning, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe that was the thought process and yeah. it worked out clearly. That was good, yeah. good on him as well. So, uh, well, I mean, I still see we have a few issues with the lower middle order. I thought, mm-hmm. you know, and I think India missed uh, Bumrah a little bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but he needs a break. He needs yeah, a break. He, he doesn't matter. I don't care about this uh, one-day series, to be honest. let him be ready for the next test yeah, series me either but i mean we can't lose completely the track of the fact that maybe this is one of the last competitive one day series left for india before the world cup i think they play zimbabwe in a series and they have the ipl the entire ipl season in between so uh, we have to be a bit oh no they're going to new zealand sorry they're also going to new zealand so they have a few one days okay all right they maybe he'll come back for, for new zealand yeah uh, we'll see now but uh, from the indian team's preparation perspective i think it's okay i forgot the new zealand series so that's that Looking and, at the uh, squad, looking at the squad, you know, uh, two changes uh, coming in. Oh yeah, Shubman so, Gill yeah. and Vijay Shankar. And Let's the reason. Let's get into you know, that. Let's yeah. get into that. Uh, what do you think of those comments from Party and all on coffee with Karan? You know, uh, Virat Kohli has said those are really inappropriate comments, and the Indian team or the team management doesn't uh, support that. Uh, but I think he was a bit immature. Yeah. There, there was a honey trap set by uh, Karan Johar, and then they just fell into it. Especially Pandya. unfortunately yes so look uh, there is something called uh, locker room talk as mr trump says and uh, that has to stay in the locker room right that's okay I, we know how guys talk to each other when they are among themselves for a few moments i think these guys entered that zone where they were in a boys only place and mm. they started talking only as if i saw a few of those clips and i think pandya was a bit off of filter issue be talking like that tv show and rahul sort of backed him up Rahul also sort of added a little bit of fuel to the fire, or added a few anecdotes of his own. Uh, that's very unfortunate. Uh, you know, nothing to take away from them. They are still, you know, Rahul is 26. Is just 26. Yeah. Uh, the kind of adulation and the kind of fame and money they are having, it might might get a bit tough for them to handle. So, I think it's not a bad idea if uh, they are given a little bit of a sensitivity training before mm-hmm. they sort of. Mm-hmm. Uh, these things uh, look current johar is known to do this he's caught many people off guard so 
that's the point of that show so these guys had to be a bit more uh, present while they were doing the interview i think that's unfortunate mm-hmm. so but yeah it's really shame i think uh, they they missed out on this very important one day series as well they would yeah. yeah i don't think they will play play in new zealand because there is an inquiry pending no 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 they will not i think i think they'll be held i think this now. guy vinod rai wanted to rush things up and then he said he they were going to be arrested or they were going to be suspended for two games and then uh, by then the inquiry would would be finished mm-hmm. but this lady uh, diana edulji she mm-hmm. said no it has to take its own course let's not rush because you will not uh, that the justice you know needs to be uh, taken we need they need to follow the right course of action and i think um, yeah and i think it's it's uh, in the end uh, it's very bad for team india because it's going to hurt them uh, in the preparation for the world cup uh, also these two players their team uh, their place in the team is sort of now in jeopardy because they will not get a run until the end of new zealand series and they may just come to play against zimbabwe or some such it's not an ideal preparation for them right these two are definitely in the squad when it can come yeah. to the world cup at least my squad i think right so mm-hmm. it's unfortunate but look they will they will need to make some restitution they'll have to show publicly through some social efforts or some such that they are reforming themselves and of course they'll have to go back in the ipl or any remaining domestic cricket if possible so that they are yeah. able to play and get some runs and time I think especially Rahul uh, he needs to go back to uh, Ranji Trophy he needs to play and score runs there for Karnataka and then make his way back to the test team uh, because I think he was out of sorts in the test series against Australia he needs to find his rhythm he needs to find his mojo back he has to do that in domestic cricket um, and I think Sanjay Manjrekar touched upon this uh, yeah yeah uh, quite clearly so uh, f- regarding his chances in the world cup uh, squad I think there still is a chance for him to play uh, but yeah I don't know how how much it's going to uh, you know materialize okay. because Shubman Gill and Vijay Shankar are going to replace them in the squad and if Shubman Gill makes some runs oh man this guy is awesome so yeah. I'm going to take a minute Vijay yeah. Shankar is sort of always around the squad he already played the Nidha Hastro T20 I think he's sort of now getting himself ready and he famously uh, he famously held one end without scoring yeah. runs while it uh, matter right <laughs> they spoke to the Tamil and they egged each other on that was perfect and they Karthik finished it off it was good right but in this case uh i think shubhmal gill is uh, one other one of those coming men of indian cricket because look at his ranji season man 1000 runs in 15 innings first mm. ranji season at uh, mm. 268 that this guy is awesome and he already had the pedigree apparently already by the time he played the under 19 world cup to represent the senior team mm. and he's showing it now so uh, if this guy comes into the team and takes the opportunity with both hands let's say right Uh, this might mean Ra- rahul may not be able to come back into the one day team in the near future or even for the world cup right you're mm. right so yeah. we'll see how that shapes up that's very interesting for it me it is very unfortunate for yeah. that uh, young man yeah, unfortunate not- for this man uh, you know there's always one to take uh, the, the place of another so it's always like that you I'm- know how much competition is out there in india in I- every field for that matter not just cricket I'm- and uh, to con- you know there are h- how many people play pro- cricket professionally in india maybe 100000 <laughs> Yeah, I guess yeah, I mean, these you know, these crop of players up. like uh, there there are about 20 25 30 people who are yeah. in the yeah. international uh, team you know test or one day yeah, yeah. and it's yeah, it's it's, it's such a huge uh, effort not just effort it's so much hard work that they have put in all their life for 15 years 10 15 years ever since they were children uh, to reach this position and then guys like Pandya and uh, Rahul have just blown it away it's very unfortunate to uh, Nah, get left out of a squad like this you know i think they will get their chances to restitute themselves and they will and yeah, yeah fine but, but then again you you look at the numbers i mean they have beaten so much competition in the country and they reached the pinnacle yeah only to fall down from there yeah it's, it's no but that's that i agree on that, that is a bit of my idea you know it, it, i want to take one, uh, another moment to uh, relate this to another um, uh, you know television uh, incident go for it i think back in the 90s uh, we had a show on mtv uh, in india uh-huh. it was called mtv bakra, bakra. Oh, there was an episode there was an episode uh, when they tried to uh, you know fool rahul dravid yeah there was uh-huh. rahul dravid they were trying to make him a bakra and yes. they had a similar setup so a, la- a lady walks in uh, you know supposedly uh, trying to do his interview and then uh, they do the interview for 10 minutes or so and then he, he this guy is actually in his hotel room having food i think he was eating his dinner he was alone all by himself uh-huh. and then this lady uh, does his interview and then she says okay the, the camera cameraman can leave now i want to have a word with rahul dravid in private 
uh-huh. then Rahul Dravid is in, uh, initially a bit shocked. What does uh-huh. this girl want to do with me now? And then he uh-huh. says, okay, fine, we can have a chat. And then he, she comes and sits next to him and then says, I really love the way you play cricket and all that crap. Uh-huh. And afterwards she says, I am in uh, love with you. I would like to marry you. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Only to realize that Rahul Dravid is really shocked, completely shocked. He says, no, no, no. How old are you now? And she says 20, and then he says, "You should be focusing on your studies. Get off here. Uh, get away from me. I don't want to talk yeah. to you about this." And then, and uh, and and then somebody else c- comes into the room. Is supposedly her dad, and says he tries to convince Rahul Dravid to get married to her, there, and all that things. Mm-hmm. And then only to realize that this is all a setup. And Rahul Dravid, you know, very serious. He he, he does. He thinks this is all going. Uh, uh, this this is actually mm-hmm. real. He doesn't realize that. Uh, this was all a setup and finally uh, at the end of it all you know it's just a show and then he realizes that he had the, everybody has a laugh but then uh-huh. if you look at the way he reacts to such approaches you know by uh, a girl a young girl uh, who says i'm interested and all that crap um, look at the way rahul dravid reacted and look at the way these guys talk about such things you know uh, it's the it's uh, look he's a product of his times as well exactly i mean i'm i'm not to say this is bad that is uh, that is good yeah. it's just to say the the, the generations you know the, um, the the generations have changed the way the kids were brought up when we were growing up to be honest Agreed. and the way the kids are exposed to and the kinds of th- stuff they are exposed to especially ipl all these wild parties after ipl mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. this uh, lavish lifestyle um so you see different uh, you, it you could be a uh... yeah Wake up call, you know, you're right. Yeah. yeah, so maybe the Indian cricket management, BCCI, needs to uh, train these guys. Yes, yes, I think it was a point. To focus, know. yeah, to focus on what they're paid for, you know, they're professional cricketers, so that should, that's what, I mean, whatever they do in their spare time is not their business, I guess, but then they should be careful because they're always in the public uh, eye. Yeah. There are enough stories about actresses and these starlets approaching players in their hotel rooms. There are enough stories. We should probably take it offline, but... Uh, at the end of the day, that's a part and parcel adulation, right? If you go all the way back mm-hmm. to home, the gladiators had to always fight off the senators' daughters and wives. It was always there, right? So, so uh, how to handle adulation has to also be sort of brought in. Either you have to be protected or you have to be taught how to protect yourself. I mean, it's not an and or. Both have to be done, I guess, because uh, it's a part and parcel of the high, uh, the limelight that these guys are used to, mm-hmm. unfortunately, or are exposed to, right? So. Yeah. I think his innate qualities as this gentleman came out with Ravid and <laughs> he's telling her concentrate on your studies. Wow, fantastic. Nice to hear that. See, I mean, uh, and you know that uh, Indian uh, youth cricket is in safe hands when you have that kind yeah, of uh, person, yeah, yeah. you know, oh. training them in under 19 and uh, India, India A team. Not to take too much away from this discussion, there is an article, I, don't, I forgot, the gentleman, of South, uh, the gentleman of South Indian Cricket. I think it's about Srinath, Ravid Lakshman and uh, Kumble. Um, it shows about how, what sort of gentlemen they were even outside of the pitch and so on. Mm-hmm. Leave all that, leave all that. Right. It's not like anything else, but it's still a real eye-opener, I would say. That, mm. uh, you know, our, our BCCI has to sort of also take it into consideration that some media training and some... Um, even they could be banned from using certain types of social media if that's what helps, you know. And these mm. two have to show up and do a bit of uh, social, uh, you know, let's say they should improve their image a little bit. They can yeah, do that. Yeah. Right? It's possible. All good. And uh, if you were to think of, um, let's say, um, what else? What else if you were to think of? I think um, a couple of small other things. Um, I would say uh, Smith's elbow injury. Has uh, mm. meant has to have an operation. Uh, the fifth of fifteenth of January he's going to have an operation. Six week of uh, recuperation following that. I think he may be finding it difficult to make it in time for the World Cup squad. This is an important thing. I think. I think Australia would have benefited quite a lot. But you know, he may he may as well well uh, travel with the team, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if there is an opportunity to. Uh, <sighs> Rabbit. No, knowing Russell and setup, I think they expect him to be a part of the setup, sort of either playing previously or I don't think they'll risk him out of the blue in the World Cup or they may. We'll see. We'll see how Australia is doing, right? Uh, come the World Cup period, selection period, mm. they may be forced to take, right? That's one thing. Yeah. Another then, thing, mm. uh, after the World Cup, I think many player players we are already talking, Dhoni may be forced to retire or may retire, you know, sort of stuff. What about the captaincy of the Indian team? Do you think, uh, let's say, Kohli, if he wins the World Cup, would you think he may want to give it up to uh, sort of make his uh, test career uh, longevity go more? Or I mean, it depends. Longevity... 
I think it depends yeah. on his motivation. He he has always been a one day player. I mean, I think look at his one day record. It's it's immaculate. It's unbelievably good. He has scored 10,000 uh, runs in one day cricket in the least number of innings, right? Uh, so maybe he has he has uh, done enough there to uh, yeah. I would say I think he's <laughs> Uh, it may be a good time for him to hand over the ODI captaincy to someone like Rohit Sharma. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Uh depending upon whether Kohli w- wants to do that. If he wants to continue playing test cricket like the way he says, uh, mm-hmm. you know, he really likes test cricket, he wants to endorse that format of the game. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's an option for him. Um I think it would be good. It would be good. It would also highlight the importance of Rohit Sharma's uh, you know, his his own uh, approach to the game i think rohit sharma is a natural captain he has led mumbai indians to a couple of ipl titles right so he's yes, no more yes, so he he knows how to deal with people he's good at man management i think and he's also good at strategy so he might well be up you know next if uh, should uh, rohit uh, sorry should kohli give up his captaincy yeah kohli definitely his place in the team is deserved right nobody will take yeah. kohli's place out only thing is he may want to sort of concentrate more in captaining the longer format just play yeah, as a player just like joe root right just exactly. like joe root yeah nothing to take away from his captaincy skills i mean come on he's good enough but mm. i would say take it easy yeah let rohit sharma do it you can field in the deep you don't have to worry and yeah. concentrate on being the best finisher for the team or the best uh, trend setter or the best you know agenda setter as far as we're yeah. concerned uh, best ledger <laughs> yeah sure so, i mean that, why not you can be the sledging captain yeah um, especially the south subcontinent and so on so all this is good right so this could be this could be something i'm i'm hoping let him win the world cup then he gets this he's going out on a high as a captain of the world day team and who knows you know after rohit sharma's time has come and gone maybe he can take it over again it's still there these options are not mm-hmm. completely ruled out right something something interesting we may see some yeah. shake up there yeah for a brief period uh, you remember when kohli was the test captain dhoni was the uh, limited overs captain so dhoni i think there was a transition period Yeah, right. so yeah, it's yeah. not like uh, kohli has not played under another captain while he was a test captain as well but indeed indeed yeah. that's a very good yeah. point yeah i i would i would like to see that man because for me kohli has done enough to prove how good a one day cricketer he is and let him win the world cup so that he's a world cup winning one day captain as well hmm. and then i would say if possible step back from the captaincy take it easy you know yeah. this is a good thing i would like him to score 15000 test runs Now, when he has finished yeah, his career. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And much of it in winning cause, I would say. Majority of it in winning so. cause. I hope mm-hmm. so, you know. I hope he gets enough test runs. Uh, he, I, I, I want to see him score some fantastic third and fourth innings test runs for India and win test matches from, the, mm-hmm. from, uh, you know, from behind for India as far as I'm concerned. Let's see, let's see. So, uh, if there are any other points, important ones. Uh, yeah, we, we like, just have to mention yeah. this. I mean, uh, the India-Australia test series were finished. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Right, two one in favor of India. Yeah, first yeah. time ever um, in Australia. Of course. Yes, yes. So this is something uh, which happens. I don't know if it's a once in a lifetime uh, event. It might, might, as, might as well be. <laughs> going forward, case. going forward, let's hope it happens more and more often. It has been yeah. a once in a lifetime so far, but between me and you, I think we may have at least fifty, sixty years more. So I'm hoping. in the next 30 30 to 30 40 yes we see it more and more let it be yeah, let's hope so i think it would be really nice uh, i think it's it, it's 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 a step in the right direction i think early just as a pair of just an example i think mm-hmm. between mid 80s and i think 2000s or up to even 2011 2013 mm-hmm. pakistan had never lost a test series in england is that so yes wow yes. because of their bowling right yeah of course so, yeah and i'm hoping we can build such a record it's such an envious record imagine that Yeah. Right? Away. You have to win away. And you're good at home. Nobody can take that away from you. Win away. At least draw series away. We. I think there's a nice article from Sid Wanga about it. Sir, how let's not completely ignore the role of the previous Indian teams in the 2000 onwards. Right? Who have come here to the Australian mm-hmm. shores. So they've built up on it. And now yeah. let's go to the next level. Let's make sure we always win. Right? That'll be fantastic. So that's one thing. Uh, other small things, you know. Um, I think the lengths that the Australian bowlers bowled showed up very nicely in the stats uh, at the end of the test series where uh, there were only uh, two or three LBW dismissals in the entire test series from Indian batting whereas there were so many in the Australian batting which showed that the lengths I think the Indian team got it right I mean the scoreline of 2-1 is not a good representation of how dominant India were actually 
And then this is one of the other important stats, which also shows the same thing. The lengths on each test match pitch was found out to be good. The Indians were able to identify it earlier than the Australian team, let's mm. say. Yeah. Then mm. the other one, the batting was completely overshadowed, right? The Indian batting was so much more dominant. There were no centuries, the Australian cricket team at all in the whole right. test match series. Right. I have to look it up. I don't know when this happened. It's <laughs> such a such a solid record. Yeah. You have to go 70, 80 years in the uh, past or some such. I have to look it up. This is a very nice mm. fact that this has not happened. Yeah. Uh, we have to just look it up. So it's interesting. So some small things. As an aftermath, I think India may struggle in the one day series, you know, but that's as you said, it's not very mm. important for us. As you long know, as if we keep counting. Uh, uh, Continuing on the same uh, vein, especially with the uh, test series, Ricky Ponting has even compared Rishabh Pant with uh, Adam Gilchrist. He yeah. said that on record. So I, he could be, I, he could well very, be another Adam Gilchrist. That's what he said. Holy cow, man! That's that's this is a guy that played with Gilchrist all of his career, right? That's very high praise. Yeah, and also Ricky Ponting has seen uh, Rishabh Pant play at Delhi, Delhi Daredevils. So he oh, knows a bit about the guy as well. So it's not like uh, he said it uh, out of the blue. He knows this guy is growing. Uh, so he's, yeah, he's been endorsed by both Ponting and even Dravid, I think, at some point mm-hmm. in time. So that that's, that doesn't come easily. That's amazing. It's it's uh, it bodes well for uh, Indian cricket, international mm-hmm. cricket for that matter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you were to listen to our Pakistani friends, uh, Noman Niaz and Rashid Latif, in their analysis show, they said uh, this guy is the coming man. And he's going to be an international superstar, and he's going to be the future captain of Indian cricket. So I'm very mm-hmm. curious how this goes. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what the future has to bring. Okay then. Uh, are we ready to switch over to the New Zealand uh, Sri Lanka series? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. So uh, just a quick uh, mention. There was the last uh, ODI of the three Test match series, uh, three One Day series, and uh, the la- only T20, right? I think uh, New Zealand blanked Sri Lanka. No wins at all. That was very, that was very unfortunate. I think uh, the third uh, one-day international, if I were to just uh, quickly go through it, it was it was a really, um, let's say it was a really uh, hodgepodge affair. The third test, uh, the third one day, they were uh, they were hit all over the park. There were hundreds for Taylor and Nichols, and uh, Sri Lanka quickly uh, lost that. I think Pereira still tried his best, but they were 249 all out. So that was a three nil in the one-day series, and in the T20 series, I think I would like to spend a little bit of time on this. I think the mm-hmm. one one of T20, that was fantastic. Because, look, they were uh, <clears throat> 55 or 5 at the end of 10 hours, right? New Zealand, batting first. And on, yep. a, on, a, on a stadium where 230 was chased by Australia previously. So that, that, that's, quite, that's quite telling. But these guys were able to come up to 179. Even at the end of the first innings, uh, the commentators were sort of bullish, saying Sri Lanka should be able to chase it down, you know. But... It was such a nice comeback. You finish on such a high. You have Santner who played for a little bit and Taylor who sort of built up a platform on which Bracewell and Kuglain played such a nice innings, 44 of 26 and 35 of 15. There were a lot of sixes hit. I think they hit nine sixes between them. And they ensured there was a competitive target. And then I think Saudi hit one six or some such in the end. And when they came out bowling, they had this confidence. They were riding on this confidence. And I thought... I thought Sri Lanka were okayly placed, you know, about 110 for four or some such, 100 and, uh, yeah, 110 for four or some such, and then there were enough balls, and with Pereira to come and Shanaka to come, I thought they were sort of properly set up to finish the match. Unfortunately, they fell away again, and now they're leaving the New Zealand tour without a single win in an international game. That's very unfortunate, I thought. And mm-hmm. this Kugelain, I think he bowled really well as well. He uh, Scott Kugelain, I think he's. Mm, he's a second generation international. His father was also an international, if I'm not wrong. And this guy, uh, I think he's setting himself up nicely in the one-day space. And Doug Bracewell, I think for me, he's proven a point. He was sort of made to uh, earn his spot back on the sidelines. He's a little bit of a bad boy, mm. as far as uh, New Zealand cricket goes. And this guy is, um, I think, made to earn his place back. And he's very talented. He's actually a better batter than a bowler, apparently, right? So um, I think he's. It's, it's a good thing that they have some bad boys like Jesse Ryder and those guys. And it's a good thing if they're made to, um, you know, earn their place back and they're made hungry to play the cricket. And maybe Pandya or Rahul also might have to be, you know, uh, taken along the similar path and they'll come mm. back much stronger. Right? Australia have done this. New Zealand have shown that this can be done. So mm. something, something to take away for us. So but that's let's about not, it. Let's, yeah, a, let's, let's not forget that New Zealand are currently ranked third. In ICC mm-hmm. ratings, uh, 
in on one day uh, in the in one day oh, setup one day okay. yeah so they are a force to be reckoned with so they will be uh, quite good oh, yeah. i think we mentioned this earlier in one of our previous podcasts the new zealand is going to be a force to consider uh, in the world cup in england especially with their uh, utility play horses. cricketers yeah they are my dark horses i really hope they win that this time you know kane williamson and what he has done for this team they really deserve to win yeah and let's let's see how it's supposed to come um, yeah but nice. it's very good that uh, their preparation is probably peaking so when india go play new zealand in the upcoming series it's going to be ideal preparation for india mm-hmm. irrespective of how the result is going to go i think mm-hmm. it's going to be a proper tussle of heavyweights as far as one day internationals and t20s go and it's going to be very good preparation for the indian team so that's why i'm not really concerned about the australian one day series you know mm-hmm. so they're going to go against the season team yeah. yeah but sri lanka now travel to australia Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes, yes. Um, Australia, I think uh, they had quite a bit of a tory time against uh, India. So they will, I think they will come back, uh, not just right. fighting. I think they will, uh, Sri Lanka will probably bear the brunt of uh, this Aussie um, uh, revenge. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't want to call it revenge, but I think Australia will have a point to prove uh, the, especially the, the test team. What do you see happening there? Uh, what's your prediction? I mean, wh- what do you think will happen in this test series? Will Sri Lanka be able, be able to put up? Right? Yeah, will Sri Lanka be able to fight? Yes. Uh, put up a fight? Think, look, it's going to be a bowler versus bowler uh, effort because I think Sri Lankan bowlers are slightly better than their batsmen in the current setup and the batsmen are a bit struggling. But I think Australia have made quite a lot of changes to that test squad. It's sort of surprising. The bowling team has re- been retained, but Uh, from the batting perspective, they've gone all over the place. They have uh, dropped uh, Aaron Finch, which was a bit of a surprise for me. The Sean brothers, again, I expected a senior Sean, uh, senior, so the Marsh brothers, I meant, sorry. And the senior Marsh, I expected to retain his place. Right? Mm-hmm. But um, let's see. Let's see. So um, for me, I expect this will be a closely contested series. Right. And if anything, Sri Lanka may have a little bit of an edge. if i may even say that uh, i agree that australian bowlers have a point to prove and if they turn up sri lanka will be blown out but otherwise sri lanka has a really good chance because um, this is the, one of the weaker australian teams we know of recent times and their batting lineup is now again a bit of you know upheaval uh, this this new guy pukovski i think he's come made a comeback into first class setup after a small break for some mental fatigue issues but he has shown he can bat time right and uh, he's made a double hundred and then you have matter and show back in the team and i think um, again no glen maxwell but i think uh, glen maxwell has been told to concentrate on the world cup i think which was a bit weird he's still one of those few uh, players in uh, australian uh, setup who have a better than 40 average in the domestic yeah. uh, long term game but anyway it's fine so i i don't know what they're doing but uh, i hope they know what they're doing that's all because this guy needed to be in the team i thought you could simply boost his confidence right just give him the confidence by including him also in the test setup it doesn't matter because even if you don't play anyway, him squad yeah no 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 i that that would have been worse if you don't have a plan to play him leave him out probably that's why they left him out but i would see him play slotting in at number 6 in this test match team right if you don't have sean marsh also in the team look what would be the setup you don't have um, Aaron Finch. So you would have uh, Matt and Shaw open with Pukowski, two newbies. You would have uh, who would you have at number three? Travis Head at number three probably. Then. But Kawaja can open, right? I mean, he, he's done uh, that. Kawaja should open, but I see he's the he's the banker in the team now. He's the most experienced batsman in the top four now, right? Unless I'm missing out on something. He he's the num he's the most <laughs> experienced player. So it's 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 I found that some of those changes not entirely. my according to my logic or my reasoning so uh, we'll see we'll see how they shape up it might be more competitive than we might expect that's how i would like to categorize that right that series mm-hmm. then um, moving on with sri lankan cricket a couple of interesting things one is this malinda pushpa kumara who's taken 10 wickets right in uh, innings this doesn't happen very often in a first class match for uh, his bowling for colombo cricket club against saracens i think he took 10 wickets and they won the match and that have doesn't happen very often could this guy i think he's 31 you were saying earlier so could this guy be uh, the next uh, let's say the banker the real in, in a real and uh, <laughs> yeah, like rangana harat you mean of course of course yeah, so could he, well he's be. also a left arm spinner like for like and he's already played test cricket for sri lanka i think Yeah. So it's no new key, and I would say in home conditions he would be a very useful inclusion for the Sri Lankan team, so that they usually play two spinners anyway or even three, right? So mm-hmm. him along with uh, this um, 
the left arm leg break bowler uh, what's his name i keep forgetting uh, chandakan sandakan as they call it sandakan yeah sandakan chandakan is the tamil word chandakan if i'm not wrong but sandakan that guy so he he would it would be very interesting i would say so this these three could be uh, the third one is still ron perera by the way so these three going forward could be the let's say the fulcrum of the bowling as far as sri lankan uh, home conditions are concerned i would say along with pick pick a bowler who is ready i think uh, nuan pradeep or uh, the other guy so lakmal uh, anybody lakmal yeah. is always there yeah yeah lakmal is good lakmal is, lakmal is quite good i'm looking forward to how he bowls in australia by the way lakmal and mm-hmm. uh, along with uh, the two new guys they have two really fast guys tusmanta chamira who's fast and also there's this lahiru kumara lahiru kumara exactly yeah. i think uh, they both uh, lahiru kumara also has a bit of attitude uh, that fast bowlers uh, fast bowler attitude yeah so i like that i like seeing that so uh, just just a small break from uh, this thing before we get back to sri lankan cricket uh, south africa have been bowled out for 303 and pakistan are chasing 381 right and they have now just completed two overs and they're eight for no loss good they have survived the first two overs very nice come on, come on. you're being a bit <laughs> nah. no I, i would really like to see pakistan put up a fight like i said go on go on with uh, sri lanka then all right so the next thing i wanted to discuss was the in sri lankan domestic cricket uh, there has been a 15 day amnesty declared by the icc's uh, anti corruption body uh, to report any and all uh, you know uh, corrupt approaches as well as corrupt practices so you know uh, sri lankan cricket is in a bit of focus when it comes to corruption because uh, sanaj jaisura has been charged and uh, also if you remember the al jazeera um, yeah the, the two documentary documentaries exactly yeah. i think there was one interview with the next sri lankan cricketer and also there was an interview with somebody who could be like a middleman yeah. with a pitch uh, curator some such so i think there is quite a lot of things going on there unfortunately if there is anything that comes out of this i think it will be more useful that they clean up their cricket and uh, rather than you know keep it uh, keep mm-hmm. these things uh, malingering on the patch. so so l- let me ask you this is if somebody uh, reports any corrupt approaches or practices mm-hmm. um, so that person will be anonymous uh, they will not re- yeah. reveal the name of the person who is reporting it yeah. um that's it they right also not be penalized So yeah exactly it, they uh, might also not be penalized that's the important thing here okay so even if you come ahead and own up to it i think there may be some wrist slapping going on some small fines and such but it might if it's not something big even your name might not be revealed to the outside world but whatever you have revealed would be fixed or would be you know sort of looked at so that's the that's the whole point i would say and mm. uh, if there is any corrupt practices going on there should be some effort made to weed out any any cricket board india pakistan sri lanka any cricket board out there i don't care but we south asians are a bit susceptible to corruption i think unfortunately so um it's a good thing that's that's how i look at it it's important yeah. that it gets mm. itself up gets this mm. crystal clear image so the thing is always the cricketers themselves were expected to hold these uh, standards up you know it's after all the gentleman's game well is it i don't know anymore but uh, it's a good thing that we are uh, at least reflecting and trying to make it clear or clean up so it's a good thing for me okay that's that's all i had to say about sri lankan cricket uh, as far as this week goes but now if you were to go and look at the english uh, lions squad unfortunately there is a <clears throat> scandal that's broken out saying that uh, a couple of players joe clark and uh, tom color cadmore two very promising batsmen and joe clark i think was the most promising of those two uh, have been caught out in a sex uh, game scandal that uh, during the trial of another player called alex hebburn there was a rape trial on going last week i think and during this trial it has come out that uh, they had a like a, a whatsapp group going on where they were uh, keeping score of how many women they each bedded or whatever how many were common among them and what not so this uh, rape trial is a bit uh, graphic unfortunately that uh, alex hebburn uh, tried to uh, force himself on another girl who had already had a in the team and some such it was not very nice what details have come out i think it hurts a bit of english cricket image already with uh, what happened last year with ben stokes and alex hales it doesn't really help that image and i think uh, therefore they are going to uh, come down a bit heavy handed on these two guys especially with joe clark i thought he was sort of already making his uh, making his presence uh, in the a circuit for a long time or the england line circuit as they call and uh, he was sort of seen as a replacement for somebody like david malan in the long longer future or you know mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. middle order in the test team if he's really done any harm to his chances that's a real real unfortunate thing right 
You know, cricketers should be in the news for scoring a big century or taking uh, five wickets, ten wickets in a in a in whatever match they're playing. Not for these reasons. This is really unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. And That's especially with social media around these days, things uh, become uh, you know things pop up more quickly. So people get to know about these things faster uh, than ever before. They need. I mean, I think. It may be another uh, issue to be taken up with uh, ICC, you know, the, about educating uh, younger people, you know, younger children who are just stepping into the game, uh, trying to play for their clubs or for country. They should be educated, I think, about these things. Okay. Getting caught, uh-huh. getting caught in the turmoil, uh, you know, this is not something they want to be associated with. If they look back in maybe five or six years' time, they realize what a bad thing it has been. It's, it will leave a black mark. Their career. This is not look, something they want to be known. Yeah. If you were to look at this incident in the current PC world and current very uh, awoke sense uh, in in terms of femininity and uh, sort of things that are going on with women out there, this doesn't bode well. This doesn't look good. 50, 60 years ago, you could have you could have sort of pushed it under the carpet saying it's a boys will be boys sort of an incident. But in these days where we have such a lot of focus on women's rights and other things, you, you can't you can't be caught doing these things, especially if you are a cricketer who wants to play international cricket. So I agree with you. Uh, so more sensitivity training. So it doesn't have to be just an Asian or a subcontinent team, but also even looks like even some teams out there from the Western world need to be trained in terms of sensitivity yeah. and how not to carry yourself. And social media has been around for 10, 15 years now. I think it's also a new thing. People are trying to understand how to make good use of it. And uh, not yeah. everybody knows how to do it. You know? I mean, no, I mean, this is some yeah. new things we are dealing with, right? Cyberbullying, yeah. uh, all of these things are, and people, so in another completely parallel example, three three starlets who are involved in the adult industry ended their life, right? Just because of cyberbullying. So it, it's, 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 it's something there is a lot of, and I heard how 14-year-old girls who are always very nasty with each other use cyberbullying to uh, target each other. School girls, you know, it's, it's, it's not all nice. So, but uh, it's, 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 it's uh, something we have to deal with uh, as a society <laughs> that has to come into terms with modern technology. Yeah, and but I think media. ICC as an organization should also take some responsibility in you know, providing the right kind of education for uh, youngsters. Not just ICC, but local boards, of course. Local boards, yeah. But it has to start from there, right? If ICC issues a directive saying this is what your uh, upcoming cricketers need to be trained, uh, trained under, you know, you need a certificate before you come in, something like that. It's fine, I guess, because uh, look, I don't expect any cricket ball to let a player go out there and play without a proper brief about social media. And so every board does it. I'm I'm confident on that. The only thing is maybe it has to be increased a little bit, that training. Or the effectiveness. You look at the effectiveness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. the effectiveness needs to be considered. You can tell a person uh, what to do, but then if he doesn't make use of it. How do you keep mm. track? You know, no, exactly. That, see, look, they'll always be bad boys. Some of these bad boys are some of the best players out there, right? You know, I, I don't know if you know. Just a quick anecdote. Um, I think it was not Alan Richardson. Who was the other all-rounder from the 50s in Australia? Let me just quickly look him up. Like uh, Miller, Miller, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he was so famous, even outside of. <clears throat> let's say the cricket field for his exploits. He, I think there was a rumor he may have had uh, an affair or two with a few royals when he went to right? So right, they'll okay. always be bad guys. So this guy was so good. He was so strong. When Bradman asked him to bowl a bouncer at one of the English batsmen, he said, look, I'm not bowling a bouncer at that guy. He's come out of the world war surviving a you know, air raid. I don't want to kill him with the bouncer. Hmm, hmm. This was that sort of a guy. But he was very famous off field for his exploits. Gary Sobers, for example. Was very famous. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exploits when it comes to women. And anyway, let's. So it's not a new thing. Some uh, Tim Saudi, I, I have heard, read and heard, is very famous. But at the end of the day, there will always be bad boys. And <clears throat> in the present day, uh, very sensitive uh, situations and it's a very sensitive world, you have to be a bit careful and you have to portray yourself the right way. That 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 has to be trained into them. That has to be. If you are not already trained or brought up that way, you have to learn those things, no matter what your age. Mm. Because you don't want to blow your career just because of some uh, irresponsible actions for a night's exactly. uh, work. Whatever, right? so, yeah. All right. So uh, one of the last things for today I would like to cover is um, something we had discussed in the very first episode. I had I was sort of um, you know passionate about uh, Misbah or somebody playing with Shahzad or Umar Akmal. You know this is coming to fruition. It looks like Shahzad once his uh, 
wrapping up his ban for uh, banned substance he'll get to play with misba for faisalabad in the qaid azam uh, second grade tournament mm. this is a fantastic thing so uh, if he gets to spend time with misba in a very you know in a very in a team environment where he gets to see how misba conducts himself and what misba does it may really impact him and bring him to a more grounded uh, you know status so that he can actually concentrate on cricket and sort of let all these um, you know a glamour and attraction go you know I, this would be really beneficial i think so uh, what we had discussed as sort of coming to fruition is happening i'm very happy to see that whoever made this happen i would like to congratulate them and i would like to request that the same thing happens with umar akmal right and for now if i were to take the same example to our rahul and pandya Mm. i would say let both of them play uh, one day at um, india a tour under rahul dravid they have to be made to play that the same thing you know let mm. rahul dravid's calmness and his uh, poise and his experience let it tell on those two let them come back even if that means if they miss a couple of tours or a couple of even a whole season with a senior team i don't mind i think it's very important they are young enough yep. that they have a very long career ahead of them both of them so it might help you know this yeah. I think that's okay. a good point. Good point. Yeah. All right then. If there are no other topics, I think uh, we can bring uh, today's uh, podcast to a close, Giri. Yeah, I think we've covered a lot of things, like always. I think it went um, a bit uh, over time. It went to a uh, 15 minutes over time. We wanted to keep it under an hour, but uh, I think we're getting better. So we'll be more focused in the coming episodes. Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, yeah, uh, just just uh, just a final note. Dale Stain is able to bowl today, so I uh-huh. don't think his injury was. Uh, as bad um, as bad as we thought he Perfect. opened the bowling already so good news good news it's good nah, for us yeah. yeah i'm going to see what he's going to do in the upcoming sessions usually if you have a bad injury the first mm-hmm. time you bowl is okay the second or the third spells is when you really know we'll see mm-hmm. but let's mm-hmm. let's really hope it was just a temporary thing yeah okay All so right yeah thanks for your time ajit thanks for having me here uh, look forward to uh, talking to you again in the next episode i wish yep. you a good day Thanks a lot Giri and uh, thanks to all our listeners keep listening to the Amchat Cricket podcast goodbye You're listening to the Amchat Cricket podcast